We're back to making rocket engines. In this video, we're gonna look at making APCP rocket engines. The APCP stands for ammonium perchlorate composite propellant. And these rocket engines are powerful and they've been around a long time. They were used as the two solid rocket boosters on each side of the space shuttle. Traditionally, the ingredients in making these rocket engines have been ammonium perchlorate, which has a chemical formula of NH4ClO4, aluminum, chemical formula of Al, and hydroxyl terminated polybutadiene, or known as HTPB for short. When you're doing these at home, so to speak, or a DIY project, you can use the HTPB, but over time it's been found that even shavings from a PVC pipe, a plastic PVC pipe, will work in place of the HTPB. I have read about people trying it with silicone that's also work, and that's what I'm gonna be trying. To test this composite using silicone, um, in the methods here, I'm gonna do two different tests. The first test, uh, the ammonium perchlorate will be 14 grams, the aluminum, one gram, and the silicone, five grams, and these are the corresponding percentages. In the second test, I'll also be using 14 grams of ammonium perchlorate, but I'll be using three grams of aluminum and three grams of silicone instead of these amounts here, and these are the corresponding percentages for these amounts over here. Be interesting, let's go do it. Here are the ingredients. Here's uh, my ammonium perchlorate, the powdered aluminum, and the silicone. And this is just regular silicone, like average, I got on Amazon. Here are some containers I'd saved that were actually for other things, like, um, I don't remember to be honest. But anyway, yeah, things like chapstick containers, anything that can act as a housing for a rocket engine that's uh, not too big for tests is perfect. My ammonium persulfate had really chunked, so it was hard to weigh it because big chunks kept falling in. So I transferred it to another beaker and broke it down a bit so this should be better all right we need 14 grams of this oh 14.07 we'll call it quits right there close enough i'll do this twice for each mix i'm weighing out one gram of powdered aluminum there we go be weighing out the three grams of aluminum but off camera for the first mix i'm going to weigh out five grams of silicone okay tiny bit too much but that's okay so i'll be mixing in my one gram here of magnesium to start because silicone does start to cure within a half hour or so it starts to get hard you need to uh you need to finish this within that time which is fine as long as you stick with it this is obviously very labor intensive all right now i'm gonna start adding this slowly Okay, you've been watching this long enough. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up off camera here. Just mixing the last bit of the ammonium perchlorate in here. It's 24 hours later and the silicone has cured and it's interesting it's flexible because it's silicone this was a little extra i had i made into a worm i guess this is what i'm gonna use to test the actual rocket engine before we try the rocket engine there so let's go burn this stuff testing the first mix of ammonium persulfate aluminum and silicone how this does It's not too bad, actually. Lighting the worm. A 
weighing out the three grams of silicone that is necessary for the second mix. And there's a little bit too much there. I've got 3.03 .03 grams. That's close enough. With the second mix, we've got three grams of aluminum with less silicone. So it's going to take a bit to mix together. I'll be doing most of that off the camera. I suspect this will take quite a while. I did manage to get all that aluminum in there, but there's still 14 grams of ammonium persulfate to come. So honestly, let's see how this goes. I'm going to start adding it here in very small amounts and uh, start, yeah, kneading this in here. Let's see how this turns out. Well, believe it or not, I got all of that powder in here. This is almost turned into powder itself. And, uh, but everything's here. What I think I'm going to do is pick it up like a putty. Yeah. And mix it to make a, uh, to make a roll to test it. That seems like the best idea right here. Okay. The second mix was much, much drier, as you can imagine. I was able though, after kneading it to make a, a roll here, uh, that needs a cure for 24 hours. And I filled a second housing here, uh, for a rocket engine. The second mix here is cured. Uh, it is a little bit flexible still, but it's much, much stiffer than the uh, first one in general. And then here are the two rocket engines. This is, uh, let's see, what is this? Mix two here. That must be mix one, of course. And I need to drill some nozzles in these. I used a product called Water Weld here to make these uh, caps on the end here. Uh, sometimes I mix it in with cat kitty litter, which you've seen me do in other projects, but I just put it in there straight. It's extremely windy out, but I'm going to light here the second mix, which was 14 grams of ammonium perchlorate, 3 grams of powdered aluminum, and 3 grams of silicone. Well, it looks like we got a rocket engine. over this in another video but you need to drill through the nozzle and then down into the engine almost to the end here you can even go all the way through if you want the reason for that is that most homemade rocket engines don't burn super clean and so as it's burning pieces get stuck in the nozzle plugging it causing the rest of this to burn making a small bomb here if you drill a hole down the center it has an area through which all of the exhaust can continue to flow through and out the end So I finished drilling holes in both of these all the way through the engines on both of them, put fuses in there, take them to these sticks, and I also put some aluminum wrapped on both of these that's held in place by some shrink wrap uh, tubing here, um, as I've had problems with the engines burning through the sticks right away and the engine goes off a little bit crazy. So let's go try these out. Getting the first rocket engine mix here that had uh, 14 grams of ammonium perchlorate six grams of uh, silicone and one gram of aluminum. All right, before I light the second mix here, we saw in the first one that obviously the nozzle got clogged and it ended up blowing up after only a few feet. I'm still going to try this. I burned quicker than the first mix, but uh, we'll see what happens. It might just blow up off the pad, but we got to try it. I'm lighting the second rocket engine here. It had ammonia perchlorate, 14 grams, aluminum, 3 grams, and silicone, 3 grams. It's always a risk these blow up. Not sure what happened. I looked pretty close at those two videos I took of uh, the first two mixes and I'm gonna go over what I think what happened and how I hope to fix it. So these drawings aren't the greatest but this is the rocket housing here and this line down the middle is the hole that I drilled down the center there 
So for mix one, what I think happened was, uh, due to the mix, this clogged fairly early, even in spite of the hole I drilled here, and it was blocked right where the exhaust would come out, and this continued to burn up here, and it blew up after about, looked like four or five feet, but it definitely blew up. So typically that's the problem. So maybe the nozzle was drilled too small, I'm not exactly sure, but let's go on to mix two here. So for mix two, again, here's the rocket housing here and the hole drilled through the rocket fuel right here. Uh, that rocket fuel obviously burned quickly. We saw earlier the, the loose piece took off on its own and um, I think it was too quick and too powerful and I think it blew out the end cap right away. So as soon as the mix started burning, the end cap, which had the nozzle, blew off and the rest of this just kind of went flying everywhere with the fuel you know, burning and also going pretty much everywhere and burning out very quickly. So this is what I'm proposing. This is what I'm going to try and do. And that is mix three. <laughs> so I'm going to use the same amount of ammonia perchlorate, 14 grams. I'm going to lessen the aluminum because it does drive the speed of the reaction. And I'm going to raise the silicone uh, to four grams, which will help slow it a little bit. Um, and hopefully we get a mix here that'll be between these two somewhere. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do for the engine housing is use a PVC pipe instead of those small, really cheap, thin uh, housings I was using earlier. Uh, and I'm going to come up with a new tougher nozzle. So I'm not sure how I'll do that yet, but you'll see here coming as I figure it out myself. This is a PVC I found that I was going to use. Um, but then I realized PVC can burn in the reaction, and I don't want to take any more chances. Um, plus, I need more fuel than I'm making to make an engine big enough to lift the weight of the PVC all by itself. So I decided to go against PVC. Instead, I'm going to use a small plastic test tube, which is pretty tough. It's uh, kind of see-through, so we can see into it as I make it, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm going to settle on this instead. Here's the 4 grams of silicone. Very, very close. And uh, I'm not going to bore you with mixing it this time. I've kneaded this third mix together. Um, it's not quite as dry as the second one, of course, because comparatively speaking, there's more silicone. So I'm going to go ahead and load it into here just by doing this time after time until it's full, leaving some room, of course, for the uh, nozzle on the end here. I finished filling the test tube here as far as I'm going to. I have some room left here for the nozzle, and I still have to drill a hole down the center of the entire thing. So I'm going to use epoxy mixed with kitty litter to make the nozzle, and I drilled a bunch of small holes here so that it leaks a little bit into them and holds it in place so it does not blow out. So I just finished putting the nozzle in as you saw. I haven't drilled it through yet, but you can see some of the epoxy did come through those little holes there. And when this hardens, that should hold really well. I finished drilling the nozzle, put a fuse in there. That drill hole goes all the way almost to the bottom here, of course. And I had some extra, quite a bit actually. So I did a small bottle rocket type thing in a plastic reusable straw. Won't light underwater, but it's been underwater here for a minute, and I'm going to take it out. Here's another method, I guess, and see if this fuel is waterproof by lighting it out here. Look at that. Lighting the third mix bottle rocket here, which was ammonium perchlorate, 14 grams, aluminum 2 grams, and silicone 4 grams.
this is most interesting. So I'm about to light the third mix here, but after seeing the bottle rocket do so poorly, I'm not really very enthusiastic about this. Take that back.